how's everybody doing? It's Paul from Magpie247, out and about, finally, once again, uh, with another view from the van. It's been a little while, but um, as those of you who will know who's uh, tuned in before, the van has been in the garage, MOT time of the year, so it's been getting things done left, right and centre, and it has cost me a pretty uh, penny. But it's, it's funny that, isn't it? It's a bit like Newcastle, you've got to put money in if you want to keep the investment going along nice and smoothly so maybe maybe if Lee Charlie ever picks up on this video he could uh, perhaps take a leaf out of that book and try and get some money out of his tight ass of a fucking owner stroke custodian of Newcastle uh, to avoid future relegation battles but yeah a relegation battle is certainly certainly what we are in uh, and despite some quarters uh, labeling me as Mr Negative I prefer to look at it as Mr Realist uh, I don't sit on the fence, I don't try and lick ass, kiss ass for any sort of agendas or trying to make relationships and this, that and the other. I call it, as I've always done, exactly as I see it, uh, Magpie 24-7, just a couple of normal fans, again, shooting the breeze, exactly how we do, uh, off, <laughs> off screen, and uh, yeah, we will continue in that vein. Um, whether you're for that or against that, that is what we've always done. We've always tried to be as honest and literally just shoot from the head, like speak from the heart about Newcastle you know, United, which we're obviously very, very passionate about. But anyway, uh, enough of that and get on to the game at the weekend. It finished Watford 1, Newcastle 1, and Watford. Uh, they must, must, must feel like a bunch of jammy bastards because let's face it. Um, with the stats, with the goal shots, with the corners, with everything else, the chances created. Newcastle United should have been walking out um, of uh, Vicarage Road with the points. There's, there's no other set of circumstances that anybody can persuade me any differently to the fact that Newcastle should feel heavily aggrieved. There were chances there, and I'm not going to scapegoat a Jacob Murphy or even a St. Maximin. Look, at the end of the day, uh, the team created chances. I thought Clark had a couple of decent chances that you would have backed him to be able to put away um, on top of the, the other chances which obviously have been replayed. At the end, I think John Anderson summed it up nicely like the rest of us all were. Just put the ball in the godforsaken fucking net and go away for three points and the situation looks a lot, lot healthier. But again, for whatever reason, that didn't happen. Drama over VAR. I don't know why there, why there was such a drama. You could tell a mile off it wasn't a goal. 1-1. Um, one, one. They will feel like it's a point gained. We feel like it's two points and the kick in the bollocks dropped. Um, and we've got to just ourselves down quickly because the thing is, six games now, no wins. If you're not careful, it can go to seven. And then you've got difficult games against the likes of Spurs and Chelsea and whatnot coming up and then it can go to eight and nine. And you could literally be in a situation where you're buried before you even realize it so you know at the, at the moment we're 17 in the in the very uh, early days of the table Newcastle often don't start uh, seasons uh, particularly well or strongly but we've got a difficult run in towards the end of the season so we've got to start to pick some points up and I think we can do uh, in the next game against Wolves if we stay with the formation because the formation was finally changed thank fuck for that um, and a change of formation, a different onus, and I think Steve Bruce went a little bit more to win a match as opposed to not lose a match, uh, which is which is better. Uh, we've got Callum Wilson to come back into the fold. I pray he's available for Wolves, but I doubt it. I think it'll be after the international break now. Um, so you know, Newcastle keep the same formation, keep the same uh, attitude going, and you've just got to hope that some of Steve Bruce's world-renowned. Uh, more luck than Hartley's type uh, job will, will come off and Newcastle will get uh, a three points and I think once we've got the first three points um, with the players that we've got in and the players to come back hopefully that's a, a good sign and um, you know we can we can really really push on um, because uh, just let me just navigate around a bit of a tricky diesel fuel <laughs> kill there um, we need to, we need to, let's take the pressure off, let's, um, 
stop always having to look over our shoulders and look down and, and, and negative because we're in a scrap but goodness me look at the players at Steve Bruce's disposal and if he can't get a result shortly even Lee Charney who obviously gets a mega mega chuff on for the likes of your McLaren and your Bruce's of this world these ex Manchester United lads who were uh, you know, in their pomp maybe 20, 30, 40 years ago or whatever uh, he seems to really like that sort of older generation of British manager uh, but even even Charnley has got to have some sort of limit where he looks at the league table he looks at the fact that Newcastle are trying to get the club sold Ashley wants the club sold and he's got to think I've got to protect the assets so I think sooner rather than later that conversation is going to come but in the meantime Bruce can do himself a lot of favours by getting a win and he's always said judge me on results well that's fine if you actually fucking get any um, so this next game against Wolves is absolutely monumental Wolves obviously uh, going to be a, a difficult opposition uh, a dangerous opposition uh, but yeah, there's, the, the, there can be no doubt in your mind that we have got to go there and aim to get a win um, and things will seem a lot, lot healthier going into a, a match. Again, I've heard people saying that Spurs, we can get up at this, that, and the other. Spurs have still got an absolutely huge array of attacking, quality, talented um, players. And I find it amazing that Nuno is under so much pressure already. Yet, what are we, six wins in 37 or something like that? It's something ridiculous, seven wins in 36. Uh, I'll get the exact stats up. They're on, I know they're on the Facebook page because I was looking at them earlier on. The run that we've been on and the results that we get and Bruce and his pals in the media protect him. Yet three defeats at Spurs and it's crisis and it's back page and it's, you know, will there be a new manager and all this sort of thing. So it's, I find it amazing. I really do. I find it amazing um, how the media, you know, drums it all up and it's especially seeming to be one because it's one of the greedy six I suppose but Bruce's record his win percentage now and again it was something else that I put up on our social media it's in the 20s percent you know it's like 27 percent or something it's below the likes of Alan Kerbishley it's below the uh, levels of a Mark Hughes and if that doesn't worry you then I don't know what will you know uh, you look at the points that we now need to be able just to stay up and uh, you know it's above a point per game and sooner rather than later Newcastle have got to start getting uh, the victories on the board so let's let's head in there uh, head into Molyneux it's it's not going to be the easiest of games but we're capable we're capable of going down there and getting the victory if Roos continues to play the right formation play the right players and very importantly something which I, again I feel he needs to improve on uh, even from this weekend's game the substitutions be proactive so when you're ahead make bold brave decisions to be able to see the result through to get a second goal to protect Newcastle to get the win in the bag because you look at the, the victories that we could have had this season we've been ahead in games but we've not seen it through we've let victories just slip away and we can't keep doing that if we want to stay in the league so yeah over the moon that Joe Willick seems to be back he's okay it was a major surprise because he was out he was out for a few weeks and he was back in I thought he played fantastic Sean Longstaff as well I thought he was um, you know really really good I thought most of the team uh, was fantastic but defensively we were good apart from obviously the situation that they, they scored their goal in uh, I've seen some Watford fans saying that he's better than Alan said maximum and I'm not going to do dick measuring but um yeah, you're off your tits. You're off your fucking tits if you think that he's better than uh, St. Maximum. Not in a month for Sundays. Um, St. Maximum down the bottom half of the table has got to be one of the best players in that group of players. Simple as, simple as. Let me know what you think about that, about Saint, and what's been said uh, recently. Um, and also what you think our, our chances against uh, Wolves. Can we do it? Will we do it? Uh, will Bruce still be manager uh, when it comes round? If he loses, what happens then? Uh, we're going into an inter international break. Is that when the club would, would um, look to sort of make a change? Look, I, I personally think, uh, for, for me, he wouldn't have been my choice from day one. I wouldn't have given the job. He was the choice 
got behind them as much as I could, supported the, the lads, continued to support the lads. 240 mile round trip for every home game, but you know, there comes a point now, and I think he even touched upon it in his press conference, that look, yes, performances have been getting better, helped by the change in the uh, formation, but there comes a time that we need results, points, not positives. Positives won't keep us in the league. I'm positive about that. Yeah, so Newcastle have to start getting some wins. We need to start this weekend. The players need to go that extra mile, push that extra few percentage points and bring in a home, see a home through, get a lead, protect a lead, score a couple of goals, do what you may, but we need this win absolutely desperately to take some pressure off and hopefully the teams around us again continue to lose and we can just edge and eke away from relegation trouble because, yeah, it's depressing that it's coming into October, a cold winter ahead and all we've got to look at and forward to again is another relegation battle. You know, a club the size of Newcastle, I still maintain, should not have this battle, should not have this problem, season in, season out. And as I'm recording this today, Brighton, who came up with us, have the chance to go to the top of the Premier League because they made bold um, and, you know, really gutsy choices at the top and it's paying off for them and we need a little bit more like that they've got standards they've got expectations these are words that just don't exist in the vocabulary of one Lee Charnley so yeah let me know how you think that's going to go and obviously there is all the shenanigans all the fun of the fair to be had this week as the court case which is going to be live streamed um, that starts off this week I think it's Wednesday off the top of my head so interesting times no doubt uh, for that one in the uh, time being, there'll obviously be a preview coming up for the Wolves game and review all the good stuff as normal like that. Uh, yeah, and take care. Keep it tuned. Pray that we get no more issues with the van. Take care, and I'll speak to you later.